Next, we're going to show you how to build a NAND gate. A NAND gate has two inputs, A and B, and one output, such that if A and B are true, then the output is false. Conversely, if either A or B are zero, then the output will be true. Okay, that's a NAND gate. We'll begin with a NOT gate that we saw from the last video. If this signal is A and this signal is out, if A is high, out will be low, and if A is low, out will be high, a NOT gate. And we see from last time the way to create a a plus the way to create a plus three output is to generate on the p-channel, on the p-channel, we generate a positive voltage across the source and the gate. So if we need to create a 3.3 for the B, we're going to create another transistor right here, another p-channel tie it to 3.3 volts, tie this output there, and connect my B signal to the gate here. So now we see that if B is low, then this one is on, and the output is 3.3 volts. So we see here that if A is low, then this one is on and the output is 3.3 volts. If B is low, this one is on and the output is 3.3 volts. So we've handled these three cases. Next, we have to handle the case of how to create a zero if both A and B are, are high. So what we're gonna need to do is a little erasing down here and add another end channel, but rather than putting it in series, we're going to put it in parallel. And now let's look at the other case here. If A is high and B is high, we see that if A is high, this is 3.3 volts and this one is off. If B is high, this is 3.3 volts, and that one's off. But now, both A and B are 3.3 volts, and so you remember what turned an end channel on is a positive uh, gate to source voltage. We'll turn on these two end channels, because this is the case I'm trying to solve, such that both these are on and my output will be zero. So we've seen we can combine N-channel transistors and P-channel transistors to create a NAND gate. Now, once we get to our computer, we're going to see something like the i7. To build an i7 processor, it's going to take over a billion of these transistors. In this class, students will not be designing transistor-based circuits like this, but we wanted to give you a little bit of fun to see how the internal workings of the digital logic in the computer work. So let's summarize what you should know. You should know that in the computer, we have digital logic. Digital logic means two states, a true or a 1 is produced with a 3.3 volt signal and a false or a 0 is going to be produced with a 0 volts.